Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is a Scala video. So today we will be building an actor system with Scala. There will be a protocol. We'll be building sort of a vending machine. Um, we will be using Scala 213 and SPT 114 and IDEA 2020. So I, I found Scala very interesting and cool functional programming language. Um, currently is you know growing a lot on big data, um, but um, there are some sort of problems like you know when you have more like a state machine or a protocol that actors can fit very well, um, and and that could be a game, um, that could be a, a chat application, could be all sort of a use cases. So let's um, get started and have some fun with Scala, Akka and SPT. I will be using Akka 2.6, right? So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first of all, let's um, build our application, right? So I'm gonna do, I have a SPT project here. I'm gonna do SPT compile first of all in order to compile. And the first thing you can see is like I'm using Java 15 and SPT 1.4, right? Um, so I compile my application uh, with no issues uh, pretty fast. Um, so now let's jump to idea. Let's see the code and let's have fun with that. So here. I have a SPT project like I showed you guys. Um, if you look on my project folder um, on plugins, I don't have um, any special plugin for um, build properties. I only have SPT version to 1.4 and that's really uh, the only thing we need here, all right? So let's look my build.spt where we have um, the dependencies right um, and we can start from here so here we have the name of the project I call it Aka vending machine I said it's version 1.0 um, we're gonna be using Scala 2.13.3 um, and mainly there are three dependencies um, the, ac the Aka actor uh, Aka remote and cluster type it um, you can use um, type it actors, but I want to go with the type it ones because um, this makes the program much more robust and much more fun. The compiler uh, help you a lot, um, and then you can fully embrace the protocol, the linear algebra, the type system we're gonna do both uh, Scala and actors, and this will be quite useful. Um, as you can see here, we are using Aka 2.6. Um, and here, um, also, um, I have some dependencies for logging, but, uh, this really doesn't matter. Um, you can ignore actually, right? So that's, um, the dependencies. Now, um, the application, it only has three files, all right? There is the type system dot Scala, actor system main app dot Scala and actors dot Scala. So. I'm gonna hit shift, left shift uh, two times. Uh, and because I did that, basically I can uh, enter uh, in this special menu in idea. And then I'm gonna type the word Zen. Uh, and then he's gonna suggest me to enter on the Zen mode. I'm gonna do that because then you're just gonna see the code. It will be much better to um, watch the code as you can see now, right? Um, so th there are um, three files here. Um, basically, um, let me see which one we should start. Um, let's start with the type system. Um, and then we, from here, we can go to the other ones, right? So here I'm defining what's um, gonna happen um, on our system and this is really important. Um, this is good not only because of the structure, but because it will save us uh, from doing some validations. And also, 
it will make harder to people to break it um, because they will need to write more code in order to do bad things, right? So it it's harder to do bad things, and that's one cool thing about type systems. Um, and also we leverage the compiler. We always end up doing much less tests by doing so, right? And that's something cool. So um, here, uh, let's get started. Um, there is uh, this trait. Um, Scala has traits. This is like an interface in Java. Um, and I'm saying uh, I have a product, right? Because this is a vending machine. Uh, and a product, it means anyone who actually supplies the implementation of the function get message, right? And if you can provide get message, you have a product. On the real world, probably would have more requirements, but here, um, this is actually fine and we don't need more than that. Um, then, uh, right away, and that's a cool thing about Scala, we can have so many case classes, traits, class and objects all in the same file, we don't have to have multiple files. And this make more like a module and much more concise, right? So for the trait product, um, I'm gonna define some products like Coke, Sprite, Chocolate Bar, and Gummy Bear, which is a candy. Um, so the Coke will extend product, and then the message is Coke is always a good choose. Um, so the message will be displayed to the user as kind of a greeting and celebration when the user buy this product. So here, there is nothing regards of actors yet that will be later on, but more in sense of our core uh, domain. Um, then we have a sprite, um, and we define that message as a sprite is is for the strong ones, right? It's for the ones feeling adventurous. And then chocolate bar, mm, yummy. Chocolate is a good call. Uh, and gummy bear, gummy bear, oh, oh, you know, because there's a gummy bear song. Um, okay, so we have four products defined, it, all right? Um, and I just want to highlight one thing. Um, so right now, if we uh, operate on the product, it means you need to extend um, the trade product in order to be referencing a product. Um, so if anyone wants to create a product, they need to do uh, you know, some case class like this, right? Um, if they want to create a new product. But uh, later on when we run the app, I'm gonna explain this more, um, but let's say you don't want to sell any other products. Um, in Scala, that can be fixed uh, if you use the word seal it, right? In this case, it means um, you can only extend this trait um, if you are here. If you're not here, you cannot extend this trait. So in this case, um, I'm gonna make the trait uh, open instead of be seal it, which is kind of uh, the default, right? Um, because I want to show some things on the main application, but let's say for sake of um, good practice and learning, if, if you want to restrict, um, you know, th that what, what you need to do, you would to use seal it um, here, for, for instance. Um, now um, we are approaching the actor part. Um, so this will be more sort of like a request response RPC uh, fashion. Um, and so um, when you ask for something, all right, you're gonna have a request. And a request is just a trait. Now I'm making seal it because I don't want anyone extending or messing this up. Um, and I'm, I'm creating a product request, which um, extends request as you can see, but then you need to define what's the product and who is the buyer. And the buyer, um, so product is a variable, right? Scala, um, on the left, you have variable names. Uh, um, then you have to, uh, column, and then you have the type, right? So, so the name of the variable is product. The type is product, which is a trait. As you can see here, it could be Coke, Sprite, chocolate bar, gummy bear, candy. And buyer, which is the name of the variable, is an actor half. An actor half um, is a generic to to the type receipt, right? And we're gonna take a look at receipt in a moment. 
So basically when I do request, I pass a product and an actor, which will be an actor of receipt. Um, this is we kind of are going on the protocol in the interaction between actors. I'm going to skip this part a bit because um, the next class when we look the actor system, you guys will understand this a bit better. Um, and I also have an order, right? Um, and maybe on the hey Diego, why do you have a product request and an order? Why is a product request not an order? Is it the same thing? Well, uh, this is here more like a terminology. Um, actually, you know, we could model it and call it wherever we want. That's not really uh, my point here. My point is more like um, I, I want to separate like the front actors from the back actors. So in that case, my core actor system uh, does not see um, the front actor system because um, the front actors will be interacting with the external world, meaning outside of the actor system. So we're gonna have our scale application and then our scale application, um, there will, will be talking to an actor um, and let's call these actors like front end actors. And that actors um, will be talking to the core actors or back end actors. And, and, and the reason why I want the separation is because I don't want to coupling uh, my core actors with uh, my scale application or what happens outside of the actor system and vice versa, right? So you can decouple your scale application from the actors as well. So that's why I have this distinction between what's in a request and what's an order. Actually, it's the same thing, but um, an order is external and a request is internal. And that's kind of the design that I'm aiming for here. Um, an order gonna have a buyer. And as you can see here, a buyer is just a string. It's not an actor reference, right? So that's why as you can see, this is the couple from the actor system, right? So this, this will make a good um, message for a front actor. And here I have a product. But product's part of my type system, right? Which is um, basically defined here. Um, and then when we look again for the product request, then we can see here that we have the product, right? Because the product uh, is the product, so it's fine, actually. Um, but now, instead of having a string, there's an actor reference, right? And that's where um, we, we enter in the actor world and that actor will be interacting with the other actors, right? So that's um, the type system. Now, let's take a look on the actors themselves, right? So here, guys, I have three actors and actors, they are in pairs. Um, what I mean by that? So you're always gonna see a class and a companion object. Um, so the companion object objects um, in Scala, they're like singleton in, in Java. So every time you have a static method, uh, that's the place to put code. And um, in um, classes, often you put stateful um, or instance specific code. Um, in objects, you put more like generic um, stateless code, right? And that's uh, how you do. But here, uh, this because you know we have an object, this means uh, we're gonna have a singleton, but what actually is happening here is this will be used um, as sort of a factory, right? So we can instantiate our actor because to instantiate an actor, you need to have a context, you need to pass the context to that actor, you need to use behaviors.setup. So it's a bit um, verbose, um, the API. Um, so basically by doing that, um, it, it will make it much more transparent and nice to, to be used in a type of actor system. So, so this pattern, because I have three actors, you're gonna see repeating over and over. So as you can see here, I have a bootstrapping actor and then I have a bootstrapping actor. So I have the class, which is the real actor, a type of actor, and I have an object, which is my companion object. Here, I have a buyer actor, and again, I have a buyer actor. So this is the actor implementation of the behavior, and this is like the companion object. And the same here, where I have a vending machine actor, and I have a vending machine. So the vending machine class is the abstract behavior, is the actor actually implementation, and um, the vending machine actor, it is, um, 
is the companion object for bootstrapping, right? Here on the top, um, there's an import, uh, really no uh, big deal. Um, I also create a um, companion object called actors, uh, where I have some sort of a generic formatting uh, because um, I want to access the actor context, uh, the name and the path of the actor, so we can see who created the actor, um, you know, what's the actor hierarchy, um, and what's the instance, if it's the same actor, so it's a different one. Um, and in, in this way, I can print that, and I don't need to be typing that all the time. I can just do FMT. Um, so, and I'm doing ports actor dot underscore because I want to import all the functions that I have on this um, actor singleton object, right? Um, and, and then, therefore, this FMT function is going to be available for everybody. And that's why you are seeing something like this. Import is interesting in Scala because you can import um, inside anywhere pretty much. Um, so uh, that's what you're seeing here. Okay, so now let's um, go back to bottle again and let me explain the system. So the bootstrapping actor um, is the actor which I was explaining to you guys. Um, this actor plays a special role, uh, special design in my system design here, which is he plays as a front end actor. Um, in that sense, he is kind of facing the external world, um, the scale application. He's like, um, you know, if you think in sense of uh, domain driven design, DDD, he's more like an um, anti corruption layer uh, and it's, it's, it's separating. The Scala app from the core of my actor system, like my core domain, again, another uh, DDD term. Um, so, so let's take a look what is a bootstrapping actor, right? Um, so a bootstrapping actor, or pretty much any type of actor, is abstract behavior of something. So this is going to be abstract behavior of an order. If you guys remember my type system explanation from the beginning, I was explaining to you guys that um, order was my concept of starting the vending process, the selling process, right? Um, and, and, and then we have this curry um, sort of a constructor where um, we are receiving the context, right? Uh, and the context is going to be an actor context and it will be the same time, the same type as the actor behavior. So I have order here, I need to have order there, right? Then pretty much your program is constructed on the own message uh, method. And our message is um, we're gonna receive a message. And when we receive a message, this will be a type of message, right? Because our actor behavior is order, our actor context is order, our message is gonna be an order, right? And our behavior, we're gonna behave for an order, right? So this is the beauty of the actor system, right? So you have an actor, you know exactly what kind of a protocol he responds to or message. Um, how he behaves in regards to that message and what he produces in regards of that message. And that's super cool. Um, so here, what we're going to do is a pattern matcher on the message, right? Which is an order. Um, and then, here what I'm saying is, um, I want an order of anything and anything. Meaning, if you go back to our type system, you can see an order could be an a buyer, which is a string and a product, right? Um, and here on an actor system, what happens actually it is, um, I don't care. So pretty much any string, any order, um, and any product. So all the orders will go through this code and that's desired. So because I want this front, actor be sort of a gateway for the whole actor system so everything we're gonna go through here so this is kind of a single entry point and that's why i'm doing this way so what i'm gonna do is okay so first thing we need to do right so if you think about a vending machine um basically we have these three actors right we have the bootstrapping actor we have the buyer actor and the vending machine and the bootstrapping actor is more like a factory that will make sure we have a buyer and a vending machine and they talk to each other, right? So the, the bootstrapping will kind of uh, make all this context exist. So here, I'm gonna use contract.spawn 
because I want Aka to create an actor for me. Uh, and the actor I want to be created, it's a buyer actor. So as you can see here, um, you know, if you think about Scala, it looks like I'm creating a class um, calling the constructor, right? Um, or calling a method, uh, a method or function, you, you would not think that because this is a capital case, right? But um, if you just look this line, this, this bit that I selected, uh, you might think that I'm calling some sort of a method or, or constructor, right? Or even creating a class. And if you remember what I said before, if we take a look on our buyer actor, right? Um, you actually need a context. So I'm not calling this class. What's happening is I'm going through my companion object because I call apply. And when I do this, when I call open and close parentheses, I'm triggering apply. And that's a sweet thing because then uh, this is all abstracted. I don't need to pass parameter here. And the code's much more concise. It's much more easier to have factor because the actor itself know how to create itself. So you don't need to pass a parameter. You don't need to call a factor here. Actually, you're calling a factor, but uh, this is the couple. And this is the interesting side of this pattern, right? So our buyer actor, uh, we're calling apply. And what apply is doing, you're gonna give me a behavior of receipt. So I'm gonna do behavior setup because I'm gonna create an actor and I'm gonna create a buyer actor and I'm gonna pass a context to that. That's what you're doing here. So we're creating an actor, which actor? A buy an actor. And I'll define his name as a buy an actor and I concatenate him with the message, right? Um, and also I am getting the nano time, the current system time in nanoseconds. Um, and um, that will be the name of the actor, this whole thing. Um, buyer actor, um, the, the the message, right? Remember, we receive an order. First parameter is a message, second is a product, or no, first the product, second is a message. Um, and then the name will be all this, right? And I'm doing this just for sake of uh, understanding. So when we see the logs, we can understand what's going on under the hood. Uh, then I want to print, uh, and then I'm gonna use my FMT function. Um, Scala has this, um, weird syntax where you know you have a string you put the s on the beginning of the string and then you can do dollar um and then you can pretty much do any coding here um so i'm calling me the fmt uh, f which is my formatting uh, function with the context um and also i'm showing the reference of my buyer which means we create an actor here and I'm printing that actor, right? So this is just bootstrapping, pretty much creating actor. So we create a buy an actor. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use the bang operation. And with the bang, we will um, send a message to an actor, right? So there is a vending. What's a vending? Uh, if you look on the top, a vending is an actor reference. So that's another actor. So the vending is the vending machine actor. So we're gonna send a message to the vending machine actor with a product request. Remember on the beginning guys, like I was explaining that there is um, order and there's product request and I wanna do, you know, DDD anti-corruption layer. I wanna separate my front actor from my back end. That's what we're doing here. By doing that, What's happening is um, we are separating important concerns, right? So now the bootstrapping actor is, um, we, are, we are calling the vending actor passing a product request and we are saying, okay, so the product request is, um, hey, this product, which is was on the order, right? So we are passing through, but now remember on the original order right here, we receive a string. Now we're not passing a string, we're passing a buyer because when the vending machine finish, the vending machine needs to talk to the to the to the buyer actor, right? So so it's, it's something like this: the 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 bootstrap actor bootstrap the vending machine and the buyer actor. Then the bootstrapping actor sends a message 
to the vending machine, passing the reference of the buyer actor, and then the, the, the vending machine and finish, it replies to the buyer actor. Um, and, and that's what they're doing. And, and finally, we are finishing with behaviors same, right? That's kind of the standard way um, to finish the on, met, uh, on message method because um, I need to, in this case, I need to operate for sort of an order. Um, and then I'm going to return that order that I received here. So I don't need to type it. I just say behavior same and then it knows what to do. So that's our bootstrapping. Um, there's one thing I didn't explain very well. Let's take a, a look now, which is the vending part, right? So the vending, as you can see, this is not defined on the on message block. This is on the class. So this is sort of a constructor code in Scala. And um, the vending machine, right, will be an actor hack of a product request. And we got the con context.spawn, and meaning context.spawn is we want to create a type of actor. And it will be a vending machine actor. And again, this is calling apply on the vending machine actor companion object, which is defined right here, All right? That's what's going on. Um, and then we are just saying vending machine actor, right? Um, and I'm printing here. Because we're doing here sort of a constructor code, this will only happen once. Um, and because the vending machine is stateful. Um, so I don't want to have more instances of that vending machine. And this will help me to have a single instance here. Uh, there's other patterns you can do. There's a cluster single toe actor pattern in Arca. You can make sure you just have one instance of the, uh, the actor on the cluster. Um, you could get the state that's on the vending machine and send to a, a data store like Cassandra or Redis. Um, but I, I did this way because this was simple uh, and shows the concept. So, okay. So once we do that, now we send a message to the vending machine. So if you take a look um, on the vending machine, right? So on the constructor on the vending machine, we have an inventory. So inventory is a state. And I decided to put my state here in place because it was easy. But this state, you actually could um, put, um, you know, in a more production ready system, this will be in some store like Cassandra or Redis, for instance. Um, so I have a multiple map, um, which I'm calling stock. And then I have all the names of my products and the quantity I have. So I have two Cokes, one Sprite, one, gummy, one chocolate bar, and one gummy bear candy. Uh, the vending machine is a bit poor right now, so we don't have many things to sell. And that's by design, so I can show that the vending machine is uh, running out of products. Um, then we code the own message on the vending machine. And what happens here is like we receive a product request. And again, behavior, we're going to be behaving as a product request. And we're going to do a pattern matcher on the request, which is a product request. So the product request um, could be um, you pass me a product and a receipt. Um, and then for that case, I want to get the item. Because remember, guys, we have a type system. Let's go to my type system here. And you either could be dealing with a Coke, Sprite, chocolate bar, or, or gummy bear candy. But because I didn't seal my trade, it could be any product, actually. So I need to be able to handle uh, some things else, right? If I was using a sealed trade, I, I, I could be much more fine. But I'm not. I need to do some extra coding here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a second pattern matching, right? Don't get lost. So the fact the, the first pattern matching is on the message, which is a product request. And the second one, it will be on the item. So I have my product and I'm going to get the name of the class and the class name I'm going to be using to be able to do some matching here. And since I have the name, the name matches with my stock, right? That's what I'm doing here. Um, and then, um, what I want to do is to say, okay, 
let me try to get an item on the stock. And when I call get in a map in Scala, um, I, I got an option. And this option, um, I don't remember if it's option or optional because one is Java, not Scala. It's option, yes. Yeah, too, too many languages. So, yeah, gonna, in, 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 in Java is optional and Scala is option. Um, and in Rascal, it is a monad, maybe, <laughs> or either. Um, so, I'm calling get on the map, right? Um, and I'm doing a pattern matcher here because uh, a couple of things could happen, right? So, one, you could pass a key that's not on the map, meaning like you want to buy a car and the car is not on the vending machine. Um, or maybe I don't have one in stock, right? So, that's a second use case, but... Um, what we do here in match is uh, either we're gonna have sun or none, right? And this is the cool thing with Scala. Scala pattern matching is super powerful because um, I'm saying stuff like this, right? Okay, so the case is none. None will mean, okay, you're trying to access a map with a key I don't recognize. And if I don't recognize your key, you're just asking me for a product which I don't know, I don't care, all right? So that's none. And it's none and say, we don't sell this item. Here's the name of the item, sorry. And we receive to, receive to is my buyer actor, right? And we send um, item out of our, or item out of catalog, right? And we send the name of the product, right? So you're, you are asking something that's out of the catalog, right? So I cannot sell you something, it's not in the vending machine. And uh, we do that with none and we use, this to send the message to the buyer actor with sun and sun i have an i here so this is cool this means um that i only uh, enter here if one the key exists on the map and two uh actually uh these numbers here right um are uh fine uh, i sorry are not fine and you're gonna understand why they're not fine. Not fine, I mean, um, we don't have this item on the stock. So if this happens here, it means I don't have the item on the stock. Then I'm gonna print and I'm gonna send a different message to the receipt to. And remember, receipt to is my product request, is my buyer actor, right? Receipt to, actor asset, buyer. Buyer of a receipt, right? Um, then if we go back there, I'm gonna say a different message now because everything is typed here. Uh, instead of saying item out of stock, I'm saying out of stock because I actually have your item, I just don't have it on stock, right? And if not, what I'm gonna do send for I, but now uh, on pattern matcher also I can do a if. So saying if I minus one um, greater than zero. This means, um, remember, I get an item from the stock. So if I if I pass Coke, I would receive the number two. If I press Stripe, I would receive one. If it was chocolate bar, one. If it was gummy, bear, candy, it would be one, right? So wherever the number is, is I. If minus one is greater than zero, it means I have the item on stock. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna reduce my stock, all right? And and then I'm gonna send you a product receipt because then I can do that selling. Uh, and this is cool because let's say you, you call Coke two times, the third time this wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be greater than zero, it would be minus one. And then we will be arriving here, right? And this is the beautiful of the pattern matcher. It's much more clear, it's much more concise, right? Now let's take a look at the receipt part, what happens with the buyer, right? Well, for the buyer, zero in the middle, um, we receive a receipt, all right? And there's different kinds of receipt. So we do a pattern matcher. So it could be either a product receipt, out of stock receipt, and it item out of stock, of out, item out of catalog. So let's start with the last one, right? Item out of the catalog means you're trying to buy something on the vending machine that we do not sell, like a car. And if that happens, I just want to print, oh no, vending machine doesn't sell that. And I want to hit them behaviors the same because this is a behavior of receipt. You have a receipt. 
However, if it's an out of stock, it means, well, we sell that, but it's not available, right? Otherwise, yeah, you, you was able to buy it. And that's an actor system, right? So that's how we make this, um, this conversation between the actors and we make this protocol work um, like a stateful machine. So now that we understand the actor system and the actors, we can take a look on the main application. So this is the Scala application, right? So first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna create an actor system and we're gonna start with the bootstrapping actor, of course. That's the first actor we're gonna call. And we're gonna call this uh, actor system as a vending system. And then I wanna do my first order. And since it's me doing the first order is Diego, I want to have a Coke. Then I'm gonna call first order three more times. And if you remember, we only have two Cokes on the stock. So what will happen is first cell gonna go through, second cell gonna go through, and these are the ones here will be out of stock because we have the items, but we don't have enough stock, all right? Um, but remember, when I'm doing this call, I'm actually talking with the bootstrapping actor, and then the bootstrapping actor is bootstrapping the vending machine, is talking to the, the, the vending machine and the buyer, and, and that's what's happening here, right? And uh, here is our application in Scala that's outside of the core of our actor system. So everything is separated. But everything is type safe. Here I'm going to do another order. Uh, and I'll say that Melina, my cat, we're going to get a Sprite. And Gandalfi, my cat, going to get a gummy bear candy. Um, these orders should go through because um, they have on the stock. Then let's say I wanna buy something I cannot buy. Uh, well, um, first of all, uh, let's say I wanna buy a what, right? And if I try to do that, you're gonna see it doesn't compile. And why is that? Well, because we have a type system, right? I cannot send a message to a bootstrapping actor on a string because um, a bootstrapping actor it's an order, and an order is a buyer, which is a string and a product. And that's not a string, right? And um, if you take a look here, you're gonna see I'm expecting an order. So that's cool because it's one last validation, right? So you will not receive a string. There's no way you can receive a string. So that's cool, right? Um, but someone can be a bit more creative and like I said, you need to do more code if you want to do the wrong thing. So yeah, so let me define a PlayStation uh, and it's a product and I'm not even bothering implementing the cat message. I just want to compile and I can't, and it compiles. And now let me ask for a PlayStation, All right? So this message, this message will go through, but then, um, if you look our implementation, implementation, you're gonna get here, and then this is gonna go to the vending machine, and then the vending machine. Look here, um, and then what will happen is you try to do a get on that product, and that product won't be here. There's no PlayStation here. I don't sell PlayStations, right? Um, in that case, um, this will go to case dot none. So because I have this case of none, I'm protected. But I could do even better if on my tap system I seal the class. If I seal this class, um, now you're gonna see the code doesn't compile. Because it's sealed. And then you cannot do this, right? I'm gonna allow it to do it just for fun because we have, um, we have validation of the code, right? But um, that's why sealed uh, traits are so cool in Scala. And now they're in Java, by the way. Uh, and they are actually a bit better. I think the Java one has interesting feature because uh, you can say what classes are part of the hierarchy. Uh, that I, I think that's more explicit. Um, I like that. But let's run this whole program, right? And see how things go. Um, so let's see. Okay. So... We are creating a vending machine. Um, you can see that the vending machine uh, is under the vending system, right? Um, and then we're creating an, an buyer, which is Diego, 
right here. Uh, and a sale is coming up, a Coke is always a good choice. So I was able to sell Coke. Then you can see here, um, we, we, we showing the vending machine, sorry, not the vending machine, an actor, right? And another actor, because these are different buyers. Why? But the same Diego, yeah, but in the way that we code, every time uh, we do, we sell something, we, we keep the same instance of the vending machine, but create a new buyer. So that was just a design choice. We could make, uh, uh, you know, um, single tone, but uh, I made it this way. So, so you can see it's different um, because of the message that I print, right? So you can see it's different actors. Uh, okay, so we got another Coke. Um, let's uh, get a Coke and let's print the stock. And you can see the Coke is going down. And another Coke is coming up. Uh, we receive a Coke. And now if we look at our stock, it's now zero. Then there is another sale coming up. Um, we look, uh, Coke is zero. Oh no, my favorite code is not available. So this item cannot be sell because we don't have any stock. Then another one for Sprite, Sprite we can do. Then we do a gummy bear, gummy bear can do. And now we try a PlayStation. <laughs> so we don't sell this item, right? So you can see my validation works. We still have a chocolate bar, no one, no one wants, right? And uh, you can see here uh, that you cannot get a PlayStation. So, so that's it guys, um, that's the video for today. I hope you guys uh, like it. See you next time. Take care. Cheers.